Immigration activists abruptly logged out of a virtual meeting with the Biden administration's top immigration officials in protest of the inhumane treatment and policies enacted regarding migrants. The group of advocates accused the administration of playing politics with human lives to avoid a malignant political issue for Democrats at the border. The physical intimidation of Haitian migrants by Border Patrol officers on horseback at the border in Del Rio will be an image that many Americans will never forget. But as polarizing as that imagery may be, it serves merely as one example of how poorly black migrants in particular have been treated. Studies have shown that black migrants are disproportionately placed in solitary confinement, face higher deportation rates, and typically are issued higher bonds by immigration judges than any other group. Biden's nominee for U.S. Customs and Border Protection Commissioner, Chris Magnus, spoke to the importance of establishing humane and efficient immigration processes during today's confirmation hearing. First and foremost, we need to enforce the law. And secondly, we need to have a process that's humane and efficient so we can deal with those who are, who are coming across the border, whether it be to seek asylum or for other purposes. Joining us to discuss are Judith Brown Dianis, the executive director of the Advancement Project and the legal director of the Haitian Bridge Alliance, Nicole Phillips. Ms. Dianis, the U.S. increased deportation flights to Haiti, sending close to 8,000 Haitians back to their native country as a result of the Del Rio border crisis, but the administration did not increase dep deportation flights to Latin American countries such as Brazil or Nicaragua. What do you make of that disparity? Well, I think, Charles, what's important is that we see immigration policy in a larger context of racial justice. And our country has a long history of expanding access to our country and entry to our country when non-Black people want to come. Um, but when darker-skinned people want to come, all of a sudden there are lots of restrictions. And so, you know, we can even go back to the Trump era when he called particular countries that were, most of them were Black majority countries, as whole countries, um, and wanted to close the borders off from Black people. And so we got to put it in that context and understand that it was Haitian migrants at the border, but there were also Cameroonians. There were other black people there. And so for me and for Advancement Project and for black folks, we need to see this as an issue of racial justice. And if this president is really about racial equity, then he has to act like it with regard to black migrants and treat them with all of the humanity that all other immigrants are treated with. Ms. Phillips, the mistreatment of black migrants has been an issue in America spanning multiple administrations. From a historical perspective, why has this been such a consistent issue other than the obvious? Yeah, and, and what happened in Del Rio that was in front of all of us um, in, our, in our TV is really just um, indicative of what we've been seeing for decades, as you mentioned. So starting with the Duvalier regime and people fleeing on boats, the Duvalier dictatorship that the United States government was supporting financially and politically, um, there was a, a mass of, uh, of folks that were leaving on boats into the United States. Guantanamo Bay was started to receive Haitian migrants. That is how the island sort of became used by the US government. Um, the, the immigration detention system as we know it started in 1981 in response to Haitian migrants seeking refuge. So these have been really um, stark attempts by the U.S. government to keep black bodies off of U.S. soil by using incarceration, right? So these are all themes that ring true today in the interior as well. Um, and then in 2016, under the Obama administration, when they saw Haitians coming to the U.S.-Mexico border, um, they used um, a, a policy called metering, which kept migrants into Mexico and didn't allow them once again 
onto U.S. soil in order to seek asylum. So these, and as you mentioned in the report, there are not only increased detention rates of black asylum seekers, or excuse me, de deportation rates, which we're seeing, um, but also higher bond rates for, for Haitian detainees, black in general, but especially Haitians, um, of up to forty, fifty thousand dollars to get out of detention. Um, but we're also seeing lower asylum rates, um, lower um, deems of credibility. Black migrants, in particular Haitians, aren't deemed credible in front of asylum officers. All of these are um, indications of racism in the immigration system. Mr. Ernest, how do you grade the Biden administration on these issues which continue to happen on their watch? And the, you know, let's just be honest, President Biden would not be sitting in that office today if it were not for black voters in this country. So how do you judge his response to this Haitian uh, migrant crisis? Well, I think, you know, this is very disappointing um, for black folks in this country, black Americans included. We look at what happened at the border and it is no different than how black people, African Americans are treated, right? The law enforcement treats black folks in the streets like this all the time, right? And for this president um, to stand by and do nothing about it in that moment, instead of doing what we would have expected a humanitarian crisis response to be, which was to ensure that people were safe, to ensure that actually these cops who are law enforcement uh, stand down. Instead, they deported people. Um, they, deported, they deported like 70 planes of folks from the border. They disappeared people. I mean, this is the other thing, Charles. They really were working on the optics of this, right? So we saw uh, law enforcement doing uh, horrible, unthinkable things to people who were seeking refuge. And what this president did was deport people, turn people back, right. others were detained, and some were released. And so that's not the response mm -hmm. that we should expect from someone who also said, just extended temporary protective status to Haitians because right. of humanitarian crisis, and now when after their president is assassinated, uh, decides right. that they should be deported back to even worse conditions. And so uh, this is a disappointment. And I am worried that what is right. going to continue is we're going to see more black migrants come to the border and that this president will not have a different response. Ms. Phillips, the, the Customs and Border Protection Office of Professional Responsibility has launched an investigation of the treatment of Haitians at the border, but all of the victims and witnesses have already been deported back to Haiti. So how much credibility will this investigation actually have? It's a really good question. Um, and, and most, it's, it's unclear whether all of the witnesses have been deported, but certainly the Biden administration has done their best to deport all of the witnesses um, to these various incidences. Um, there still were many who turned who turned back from um, Del Rio into Ciudad Acuña onto the Mexico side of the border. Um, we, along with the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Center um, and others did an investigation and spoke with those witnesses. We actually even have spoken with uh, witnesses that were in some of the photos um, in the news clips that, that you showed um, earlier in the program. Um, we also have been part of a coalition of the Indocu Black Network and many other organizations that filed a, a, a complaint um, with the with Department of Homeland Security to do more than just their own investigation. We're asking for remedies from them um, to stop these deportations because every time they send a new airplane and they've sent 76 flights to Haiti in just a month of over 8,000 people. Every time they send another plane, they're sending, as you say, a plane full of witnesses. So we've mm -hmm. asked them to stop these deportations right. to preserve the evidence. And of course, they've declined to do so. So right. how, how you know, these are the people that were the ones who did these policies. How, like you say, how good is this investigation really going to be? We're suspect. Exactly. 
Judith Brown, Dianas, and Nicole Phillips, thank you both for joining me tonight.